Parker Schnabel has some shocking news that will blow your mind, he narrowly avoided bankruptcy in just one day. Was it luck, or was it a mastermind strategy that he used to turn the tables around? We've paid royalties on the pits, we have to get the pits done. We're going to need something with a big blade and a bunch of horsepower to move all that material, Parker states. Buckle up, because you're about to be astounded by this unbelievable turn of events as we reveal the specifics of Parker's extraordinary journey. Following Parker Schnabel at his lowest point in the most recent Gold Rush installment, we see him continuing forward with the same old red truck and an exhausted crew, but now he's got new costly challenges to deal with. All season long, Parker has been dealing with financial issues, and he and his teammates have been living in constant fear of bankruptcy and ruin. I wonder if at the end of the season will be like, we should have not done that, he muses. Going home empty-handed isn't the only thing at stake here. Everything boils down to him falling short of what his staff and enthusiastic fans at home had hoped for. Over the course of the season, Parker's objectives have begun to change from recovering the $15 million he invested in the claim, and maybe collecting up to 880,000 ounces of gold, to just breaking even and recovering all the money that was squandered in this extensive operation. What began as a heroic and audacious mission to acquire numerous claims rich in gold has devolved into a nightmare for any gold miner worth their salt. The closure of his sole gold-producing wash plant has rendered even that modest aim meaningless, leaving him with no sucker. Time is money in this industry, and Parker is losing more and more of it every second, the episode narrates. However, in the eighth episode of season 14, titled Last Ditch Gold, his luck is said to improve. Despite bringing in almost $800,000 worth of gold, he has only brought in 400 ounces. While it may appear remarkable to produce nearly a million dollars worth of gold in just two months to the average person, this quantity pales in comparison to the estimated 880,000 ounces of gold or $160 million that Parker staked his claim on finding in Dominion Creek. Indeed, he understood this lavish undertaking would be a risky gamble from the start, thus, the word, bet, is appropriate, considering that Dominion Creek is supposedly a long stretch of undeveloped land, the narrative continues. One can understand Parker's disappointment in finding only 400 ounces. The claim's undeveloped nature makes it an ideal spot for a daring gold miner hoping to strike it rich. Parker eventually gets a glimpse of the gold-producing facility. Maybe the camera is trying to catch the movement of the speedometer dial, or it's just giving him a moment to collect himself after hearing this terrible news. That pit Tyson's in right now should have lasted two to three weeks, Parker reflects, indicating the pressures and disappointments of gold mining. As the season progresses, Parker must contend with diminishing returns and escalating debts, pushing him closer to the edge of financial ruin than ever before. It's a tense and challenging period, marked by tough decisions and the harsh realities of a risky industry. However, if Tyson wants to reach thawed ground, he needs to improve his expectations. Chris's dream is about being on a beach in the Bahamas, which reveals a lot about their life stages. Although Tyson's small joke appears insincere at first glance, it alludes to the fact that, although he is older than Parker, he is significantly younger than Chris, his co-worker. Tyson Lee, at 32 years old, is still hoping for great things in his mining career, while Chris, both wiser and older, fantasizes about finally unwinding after a lifetime of hard work. Despite or perhaps because of their vastly diverse life goals and aspirations, they appear to get along famously. Chris calmly keeps rinsing the sluice as Tyson departs. Parker is making his way up the hill, 10 miles from the motionless sluice, to see Mitch Blaschk, a foreman in a dark suit who is diligently stripping the first cut at Dominion Creek or the Money Pit. As Parker approaches from the left, Mitch stops his machine and waits for him to approach his side. Mitch gives an optimistic response when Parker asks how his levels are doing, stating that they are, not too awful. Parker doesn't spend any time, Mitch appears anxious and insecure as Parker presses him for answers on his feelings towards the depths he is cutting into the ditch. When Mitch responds to Parker's very simple inquiries, he uses filler phrases like, I mean, and his tone is erratic. His body language, 
including his lips curled into a narrow line and his apparent avoidance of eye contact, suggests that he is nervous. Before he speaks, Mitch even massages his lips with his hand. All of these small ticks may indicate a multitude of things, such as Mitch being concerned about his job security due to his knowledge of the crew's setbacks, or perhaps Mitch feels uncomfortable being the center of attention and is hence camera shy. The camera pans to Parker, who appears to have noticed Mitch's actions. He narrows his eyes and stares at Mitch intently before looking off into the distance toward the hills. Parker then states that he has an idea that Mitch should think about. Mitch casually says, let's hear it, and Parker points out that the ditch Mitch has been working in appears to be rather dry and may be ready to be sluiced. Mitch nods his head in agreement and proceeds to trail behind Parker as he confidently steps into the broad ditch they had created to sluice for gold. Mitch refrains from rejecting this out-of-the-ordinary proposal because he sees it as a desperate attempt to obtain much-needed funds in order to be able to sluice pay dirt. Parker's crew had been diligently working for the past six weeks to strip 24 acres of the money pit. This was done in order to acquire the ability to sluice pay dirt. Following the excavation of the money pit, they discovered that the pay had been frozen. You know they're going to start calling in those debts, and we've got to get some gold to fulfill those debts. If we don't pay the bills, we lose what we've got, what we got invested into it, Parker reflects, the weight of his responsibilities clearly on his mind. It was necessary for them to devise a strategy in order to extract the gold from this region because the land is so freezing and abrasive. Their resourceful thinking resulted in the creation of a plan to go around the edge of the cut and dig ditches for the meltwater that would drain into them from the pay gravels that were thawing on the ground. Despite the fact that the majority of the cut is still frozen, there is a small amount of pay dirt that has thawed deep within the ditches that have just been dug and it is ready to be sluiced. With a hand on his chin and a concerned expression on his face, Mitch gives off the impression of being reluctant around the Parker bot. When he inquires about the plant that he was considering utilizing for this concept, Parker responds in a somewhat hazy manner by stating that it is the one that is currently present. Mitch, of course, is inquiring about the wash plant that they would be utilizing for Parker's idea, which is quite ingenious. The son of the Lucifer is Mitch's quick response to Parker's hazy response, which he gives without hesitation when Mitch refers to the pretty complex piece of machinery, formally named as the Mon SD-600. Parker snickers at the moniker Mitch uses to refer to it. Mitch's defense of his silly term for the wash plant is that they need to name it, this would make it easier for everyone to understand what wash plant they are talking about in conversations going forward. While this debate is taking place, Parker is already making his way toward the son of the Lucifer. He walks with self-assurance across the mountains of dirt ditches that surround the frozen cut, while Mitch is extending his stride in order to catch up to Parker, who has long legs. He appears to stumble and leave a massive cloud of dirt behind him. As Parker sits in his excavator, he is having a conversation with himself, telling himself that he is hoping there is a lot of gold in it. This is a pretty intriguing remark that he made to himself. It could be his interpretation of the term manifestation, mainly due to the fact that Parker does not have any direct influence over the outcome of this gamble. The only thing he can do at this point is hope that this paid dirt will demonstrate to everyone that there is a wealth of gold waiting for them in their money pit.